What's up folks, it's your buddy Fatal Roadie. Tonight we're going to be doing the Raw recap. We started off last week with a recap of the Under Siege stuff that happened with the New Day. Then Stephanie McMahon comes out, she calls out Kurt Angle, then she proceeds to run him down quite a bit. This bit went on entirely too long. It looks like she's about to fire him, but then the shield come out. Dean Ambrose says that Kurt Angle is their leader. Then Roman Reigns says that they want the New Day at Survivor Series. There was a little bit of back and forth between Stephanie McMahon and Roman Reigns in regards to where Roman was for the past couple weeks. Roman Reigns turns it around. Where was I? Where were you? You were gone for like six or seven months. But we come to our first match. It's a triple threat match. Mickey James, Dana Brooks, and Bailey for the fifth position in the Raw Survivor Series team. I was actually thinking that we were going to have Paige show up and this be a fatal four-way, but she never showed up tonight. There was a decent bit of back and forth in this match. It was an okay match. Dana Brooks rolls out of the ring and Asuka comes over to help her out and Dana Brooks hits her. Bad mistake. Asuka chases her down and levels her. Mickey James is getting ready to go for the DDT on Bailey. She spins around, gets the belly to Bailey on Mickey James and gets the pin. So she's the fifth member of the Raw Women's Survivor Series team. We then have a tag match for the Cruiserweights, Enzo and Drew Gulak versus Kalisto and Akira Tozawa. This is actually a decent match. One of the things I liked about it is they let Kalisto and Tozawa do a bunch of flippy shit, which I'm all in favor for. I wish they would do more of that, but they try to keep them grounded. I don't know why. Enzo won with the Jodanzo to Tozawa, which I think they did that to save face on Kalisto because he's going to be facing him at Survivor Series. We then have another episode of our wonderful show, Miz TV. Bruh. We got the Three Stooges coming out. We get the Miz running his mouth about Baron Corbin and Survivor Series. Then he intros the bar. They come out and Seamus and Cesaro can start to run down Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins and how they're going to demolish the Usos, or as they put it, jailbreak the Uso penitentiary. We then have Bray Wyatt versus Jason Jordan, and this is supposed to set up if Jason Jordan is ready to be on the Survivor Series team. Right at the start of the match, Jason Jordan was in control. Bray Wyatt rolls outside. Jason Jordan tries to rush him, but Bray sidesteps him and sends him flying into the barricade. From then on, Bray Wyatt takes over. Jason Jordan tries fighting back. He tweaks his knee pretty good, and Bray Wyatt capitalizes on that. Bray Wyatt tries to get the sister Abigail on Jason Jordan, but Jason Jordan was able to sneak out a pin on Bray Wyatt for the win. After the match, Bray Wyatt attacks Jason Jordan, to which the crowd reacts with a thank you Wyatt chant. Shortly afterwards, we're backstage with Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle saying that Jason Jordan may have to be replaced. And Jason Jordan is saying, please don't do it, Dad. He's pulling on the heartstrings of Kurt Angle. I hope you all played your number today because we got an appearance by Brock Lesnar this week. He comes out with Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman starts to hype up Survivor Series. And apparently, during all this, somebody proposed because the crowd started chanting, She said yes, which completely threw Paul Heyman off of his game. He, you could tell he was like, What, 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 what? It was kind of funny at the moment, but Paul Heyman was able to counter it beautifully by saying, She said yes because she's never been this close to the beast before. This was classic ECW Paul Heyman. I'm not a big fan of Paul Heyman, but I have to salute his thinking on his toes and coming back that quick. But basically, it was just a big hype up for the AJ Styles Brock Lesnar match at Survivor Series. We then have a six man tag match with The Shield versus The Bar and The Miz. The Shield start off dominating through most of this match. Even a spot where they make The Miz run into the crowd away from the ring like the little bitch that he is. After the break, The Miz is back into the ring. And he's in control. Shortly afterwards, Roman Reigns tags in and he clears out everything. After a flurry between all six participants, The Miz is left in the ring alone with all three members of The Shield. The Miz eats a spear from Roman Reigns and then they set him up for the triple powerbomb. Roman Reigns gets the pin and they stand tall over The Miz. Then we get Kurt Angle coming out, saying he has an announcement about the Survivor Series team that he has to replace Jason Jordan because of his knee injury. Jason Jordan comes out crying to, to Kurt Angle that he needs to be on the team, playing on his sympathies that Kurt Angle had a broken neck and won. Stephanie McMahon comes out and tells Kurt Angle that he has to make this decision. Kurt Angle's a little on the hesitant side, and then Triple H's music hits. He comes out, confronts Kurt Angle, and says, either you make this decision or I will. So then he makes the announcement that he himself, Triple H, is the fifth member of the Raw Survivor Series team. 
Then after a bit of a conversation between the two, like it was real short, Triple H said something and Kurt Angle was nodding his head. Triple H went over and pedigreed Jason Jordan. Now also at the same time, the crowd was chanting pedigree. So you kind of almost saw that coming. Now I don't know if Kurt Angle okayed the pedigree or not. If that was what Triple H and Kurt Angle had said to each other or that was just a decision on Triple H's part. But I'm starting to think, because it was talked about in the past, that this is actually going to be the bit that turns Jason Jordan into a heel against Kurt Angle. I personally wasn't in favor for Jason Jordan being part of the Survivor Series Raw team. So this actually looks to be pretty decent. We then have a tag team match, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe versus the club. This match was made supposedly to get Finn Balor and Samoa Joe to show some team support. This was actually a decent match. Both teams showed a lot of offense. Samoa Joe even got an an incredible. I was stunned. Samoa Joe got a suicide dive to the outside on Luke Gallows. Like I said, I was in shock when I I was like, wow, that big man got airborne. (laughs) But as he did that, Finn Balor got the coup de grace on Carl Anderson for the pin. We then come to our main event, Braun Strowman versus Kane. Pretty much as soon as they get into the ring, they both go at it. The bell never rang. So essentially, this is going to be a no contest match because nobody pinned anybody. I'll get into it in a second. They take the fight outside the ring. Kane sets up a table, then takes a steel chair to Braun Strowman's back. Kane tries to go for a choke slam, but Braun Strowman powers his way out of it. Then he takes a steel chair and starts whacking away at Kane. He tries to get him into the ring, then notices the table. Then I think what he was trying to do was do a superplex up over the corner of the turnbuckle out onto the table that didn't pan out Kane fought his way out of it but let Braun Strowman execute a really nice double axe handle off the middle rope you don't see big men coming off the rope too many times so I got to give him credit for that Braun Strowman sets up Kane for the power slam and ends up power slamming Kane through the mat like completely through the mat underneath the underneath the ring type deal which has been done before it's kind of hokey now two big people like when braun Strowman big show i think it was braun Strowman superplexed the big show off of the top rope or something like that the whole ring collapsed so this is along the same lines it was a little hokey you know it was done for a pop i understand that but like i said nobody pinned anybody it was a no contest match after this the show goes off the air This was actually, for a go-home show for a pay-per-view, this was actually pretty bad. Some of the matches were okay, but if they even cut down half, half of the recaps and reviews and stuff that's building up to the match, Braun Strowman and Kane could have had a decent match because they started this match at 2 minutes after 11. And the show was supposed to go off at 5 after 11. And it, of course it ran over a little bit. But they would have at least been able to have a match if they would have done away with half of these recaps and showing, showing us stuff that we've seen 10,852 times. And for this, it was kind of a weird end for a go-home show. I, was, I wasn't too thrilled with it. And there was supposed to be talks about Paige returning tonight, which I'm not sure if they were planning on it and just things ran over so they didn't do it. But if they were going to do that, especially if they cut down half of these damn promos, they could have done it. They could have put her out and given Kane and Strowman a good match. And then throughout the show, there were talks about possibly a retaliation on SmackDown for what they did on Raw. Which being tomorrow, being the last SmackDown before Survivor Series, it's either now or never. So we're either going to see it or we're not. There are rumors that that's going to happen, but we'll have to see. But I'll do it for tonight's Raw recap. I'll be back tomorrow for the SmackDown review. Leave a comment down below what you thought of tonight's SmackDown, what you thought of tonight's video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.